I've had a question come in about primer per manners, no replication at the lowest level message. And the simplest way to respond to that is with a video just talking about when that message occurs and what it means. So this is a situation I'm working in. Um, and this is based on a real world example where someone was looking at invading species, so that's this blobby thing here, so it's an invading grass which is established patches in undisturbed natural countryside. So the light green is the natural undisturbed countryside and the darker green blobby bits here are the invading species or the invading weed. And the way this study was done last year is by setting up a plot inside that patch with another plot nearby in undisturbed habitat. So that's the control plot and then I've got an invaded plot. Now for some of these studies we only get a single number for each species in the plot. So I might get 30, 50 different species of invertebrates but I get a total count for the plot and that is to do with the way the sampling is done. So in the situation I've illustrated here I'll end up with four numbers for the controls and four numbers for the invaded plots with however many species that actually turn up or are found. Okay, so let's go to Primer and look at the data. As I said, these are invented numbers and you can see the labels going down. Invaded control, invaded control. So let's go and do the resemblance. I'll use Bray Curtis as usual and I get this message. Now note this is not an error message, it's a warning. It's just reminding me that I haven't transformed these data and is that the way I wish to proceed? Uh, no it isn't. So I'll go back, new treatment, transform. Square root would be appropriate here because I don't have very large abundances. And then I'll rename this. D for data, square root. Right. Resemblance. Ray Curtis. And we're fine there. So we've got resemblance break hurtus. I find it's a good idea to label things as you work through it. Help you keep track. Okay, so if we just go back here for a minute, we've got a contrast between invaded and control patches. So well, let's go and create the term that over. It's status invaded versus control. And so I've got this set up there. Let's go back here and run it. Oh, another message. Okay, I should be using a different permutation method here, so I'll switch that over. Oh, unrestricted. That is just for one factor. And here's the outcome. Um, the status factor is actually not significant but the number of unique perms is only 10, so there's only 10 unique permutations. In this situation, we're going to have to do something else. So an alternate way of getting p-values is to do the Monte Carlo tests. And If I do the Monte Carlo test, you see there I get a p-value of 0 0.001. Now the Monte Carlo is a different way of using permutations to get a probability value. And for more details, I recommend going and looking at the manual. Okay, so I've got a significant difference. Unfortunately, the one-factor analysis here doesn't take into account a an important aspect of the study design. Let's go back. That aspect is that the plots here are actually in pairs. 
and the invaded and control are closer together than they are from other pairs of plots. So there's actually a second factor in this design. Pair, or the generic term is block, and the generic term for this kind of design is a randomized block design, where we're assigning treatments to one of two categories, but they're actually spatially arranged. So, what I need to do is set up a more appropriate design. What has this got to do with no replication? We will see shortly. Okay, so now I'll have status as a fixed factor because I'm interested in that comparison, and then I've got block as usually a random factor because we're just picking areas to work with. Back to the permit over. Here, being careful to select design 2, and now I'm switching back to permutation of residuals because I've got a two factors design. I'll leave Monte Carlo tests on. One. No replication at the lowest level. Okay, let me run it and come back and explain what that means. What that means here is if I look at the design, I've got two factors, uh, and I know I've got four blocks here, and I've only got three blocks in the data. Don't worry about that. It's a minor inconsistency. One of those factors is invaded versus control. There's no problems there. And if I look at that, I've got four control plots and four invaded plots, so it's a nicely balanced design. But I've also got this other factor, pair or block. And if I look at the interaction between block and pair, that term does not appear in the analysis of variance here because I have only one number for each invaded plot for each block. If I had, say, three soil cores here and account for each species from each soil core, then I'd have three replicates there, three replicates there, and multiply that up. And in that case, I would not get that message about no replication. Getting the message because the two factors up here, status has two levels, block has three levels, those two factors together define six combinations, and I've only got six sets of data. It's not replicated. Now, putting the block factor in increases the number of unique permutations because it takes something else into account. Um, but this, these are still low. We Ideally we want up around about a thousand. So I'd still be looking at the permutation, uh, sorry, the p-value for the Monte Carlo tests. And the result doesn't change, it's still highly significant for status, and there's some evidence for a block effect, but it's not significant. Have a look at the residuals here for the mean square, 10.585. Let's go back here. Mean square residual is much larger, and that's because this analysis does not take into account the block effect, and it doesn't pull out or separate out, partition out, variation which is due to differences among the blocks. And that's essentially spatial differences, um, which will be correlated with habitat and various other things. Okay? So, to sum up, the no replication is occurring because if I multiply the levels of the two factors together to get the total number of different combinations of conditions, I get six. And looking back at the original data, I only have six samples. There is no replication at the level of block status 
interaction.